Good morning guys and welcome back. So today we're talking about the worst mods ever done on a Jeep. Now it can be any Jeep, a Wrangler, a Renegade, an XJ, it doesn't matter what it is, these are the worst mods you can do to a Jeep. Now I don't want to be very biased and just say my opinion, so I actually asked you guys um, on a community post on here um, a couple of days ago, I've got your, your responses, and I also asked you guys in a poll on Instagram as well. That way it's just not my opinion, it's everybody's opinion as well. But before we get started, I'm not trying to point fun at anyone else's Jeep. Every, everybody builds their Jeeps in their own way. It, it shows their personality, what they like. So don't feel bad. I don't want to make anybody sad or anything like that. It's just a fun, fun sort of video to show some of the worst mods and what people have done. Um, some that I think people shouldn't do and it's a little bit of a waste of money and other things I can see where people are going with it and some things do look really cool as well. I mean everybody's different, everybody's got their own opinion of what looks good, what's functional and kind of what works for them in their own way. Which is the awesome thing about building jeeps, they can, they can all be different. Um, and sorry about my pale body here and tan face, just coming into summer, this has been covered up all winter um, and it's slowly getting hotter, so hot even. Down in the backyard there we're setting up uh, for a nice picnic. Um, and there was a bloody brown snake, which is the second most poisonous snake in the world. Um, so luckily we didn't we didn't stand on it and didn't bite us, but we headed back upstairs and it's just one of the fun parts of living in Australia. But yeah, don't worry about this nice power section. But just before we get started, comment below um, in the comment section what you think um, the worst Jeep mods are. Now this is your guys' opinion as I said before, but comment below what you guys think the worst Jeep mods are. So let's get started. So as I said before, um, I asked you guys on Instagram, now the consensus came back as the worst mod you guys can do to a Jeep, no matter what it is, is an angry grill. Now, when I was first getting into Jeeps, I actually really wanted an angry grill. Um, now, as time's gone on, I'm really a seven slot kind of guy, a very factory grill sort of person. But I can see where people are coming from getting the angry grills, but there's the angry grill, and then there's like a shark grill, and there's a gladiator grill, and all that sort of stuff. Now I think there's a point where you can take it too far where it becomes a bit strange, sort of like these ones, like what the hell would people think, like I'm sorry people have their own opinions of what looks good but that's just, wow it is different, I'll give them that but Angry Girls, that's the consensus everybody has said online, on the Instagram post um, and on the YouTube community board as well Angry Girls, and I'm sure, I'm sure a few people here do have Angry Girls, I'm sorry I hope I haven't hurt you guys' feeling, and I hope everybody else hasn't hurt your feelings as well. If you guys like them, and I think there's a point where when you paint them and you style them, kind of match your Jeep, um, and it starts to look a lot better. It kind of ties in with everything that you are doing, but when you just have a factory Jeep and everything like that, and you just slap an angry grill on there, it doesn't look as good. I think when you style things around the angry grill um, and kind of ties in with your theme and stuff like that, I think it can look very sweet. But consensus is angry grill. So the next one on the list is chrome. I'm a firm believer that a lot of Jeeps shouldn't have chrome. It just, especially cheap chrome, if you go very expensive stuff and actually chrome by itself, it can look very clean and classy. But a lot of people change the door hinges, the door latches, the grills. Oh my God, that grill looks disgusting. A lot of people change the grills, um, headlights, surrounds and stuff like that to chrome, chrome bumpers, chrome, chrome side skirts, chrome rear bumpers, everything like that. Even painting the whole car chrome. What the hell? Let's do that. Ah, it just doesn't look good. But I think that, uh, with the newer cars, it doesn't look good. But if you've got like an older classic car like the CJ or something like that, it can look very classy if, you, if it's done properly. But I think over time, especially if you get the really cheap stuff, it um, starts to bubble and starts to get like that real flaky stuff inside it. And it looks absolutely horrible. And a lot of people see that as well. Anything chrome on a Jeep does, does not look good. Like, Jeeps are meant to be, like as my wife said, Jeeps are meant to be uh, rugged sort of vehicles and chrome is just not one of those things that looks good. Um, matte black stuff looks really good, texture, that wrapped line stuff looks very good, chrome. Maybe after a while I might get that like texture finish just because it starts bubbling and crap, um, but yeah, it doesn't look good. Alright, next one on the list, um, big wheels, little tyres, yes. Now. There's a point where you go too far, where your wheel's a, like I'm talking about the actual rim, having like a 20 inch wheel with a very thin profile tire. So if you, if you've got 33 inch tires, you know you've got a bigger profile, um, and that profile is a percentage, well if you've got, say, 
we got 265, 75, 17. Um, the 75 is the 75% of the 265, and that's how you work out the profile of the tyre. I think. I did work in a tyre shop, but that was a few years ago now. But big wheels with a small profile tyres, especially on a Jeep, look disgusting. Like these Jeeps here, they look absolutely horrible. Like these are supposed to be hardcore four wheel drive vehicles, even in stock form. They look good, but when you start adding big tyres um, with small profile wheels, it uh, it's just not my style. And I'm, I'm a lot of people out there will probably agree with me as well. It's not a good style. Like maybe like a classic um, low rider style will look pretty cool, but just not on a Jeep, a classic looking Jeep that's supposed to be a four wheel drive. Now. In Australia and New Zealand and a lot of other countries, we didn't get the two-wheel drive Jeep. I know a lot of you guys did in America, but we didn't here. Maybe for a two-wheel drive Jeep, it might look a little bit better because you're not taking away the fact that it's a four-wheel drive and it should be off-road um, and enjoying its life as it should be made for. Um, but that brings me to the next thing, lowering a Jeep. No, like even the stock height, a lot of people will be like, oh, you, nah, you can't go wheeling. The stock Jeep is too low. Now. Imagine if people actually lower that down as well. No. I've seen a rat rod with Woolies Jeep and that looks awesome. That looks sick. Kind of based around that style that you're going for. But if you lower a Jeep on thin, low profile tires, doesn't look good. Now the one answer that I, I will definitely not agree with, whoever commented this on Instagram, someone said buying a Jeep is the worst mod you can do. Now, well, well, of course, if you buy another car, then you're not buying a Jeep, so then you can't, can't mod it, so it's kind of, yeah, it doesn't really work like that. Um, and cold air intake on a Jeep. Um, now, I'm talking about one of those chrome little, it comes off the intake into like a pod filter. Now, the factory air box on a Jeep was made to be there. Now, if you take that out and run a supposed to be cold air intake, now that filter is only sucking in hot air from the actual engine bay. It doesn't really have anywhere to take that air from. If you pair that, if you say you do that, now we're talking about not adding an air box and a snorkel after the fact. If you add an enclosed air box with a snorkel that is actually drawing hot, cold air from outside the vehicle, that's awesome. That's made for a purpose. But if you're just adding a pod filter inside the engine bay, all that pod filter is doing is actually just sucking in a cold air from actually inside the engine bay. So it's not really doing what you've bought it for, what its actual purpose is. But if you make an air box for that, that will work even better. The other thing is, if you are planning on taking your Jeep off-road, any sandy scenarios, dust, whatever it might be, that pod filter itself will actually just be sucking in dirt and grime. So one of the worst mods is actually trying to add a cold air intake to a Jeep, especially if you're gonna take it off-road. If you're not planning to take it off-road, um, maybe. Um, but it's still going to be drawing in more hot air from inside the engine bay rather than colder air from outside. And the next one is a lift kit with factory sized tyres. This goes from the fact never skip leg day. If you are planning to lift your vehicle, maybe hold off, get the, all the parts you need, then all at once add your bigger tyres, whatever it might be, if you're just using factory wheels and you're going up to 31s, 33s, 35s, you can do those on a factory size wheel. Um, but if you are lifting your Jeep, it looks so funny. Now, it also goes to the fact about people not adding a full size spare. You see people with like 35s, 40 inch tires, and they've got this teeny weeny spare wheel. Now, what, how is that going to work if you get a flat tire and you've got to change something out? It's not. So, if you are lifting something up, lift your tires as well. It's going to fill in those arches. It's going to look a lot better and it's going to help your off road as well. Also, the fact to replace your spare wheel with a full size spare wheel as well. Man, I. I always get a giggle of people doing like a, like, especially different sorts of wheels as well. They do like these massive offset wheels um, with these big tires, but they don't, don't replace the effect. It looks so tiny. It looks, it looks funny. I always get a little bit of a laugh out of that. <laughs> but that's just my opinion, guys. If you guys like that, it's all up to you guys and what you think is cool. But if you are lifting it, don't skip the day. Get some bigger tires, um, and it's going to help you better off-road as well. I'm not talking about little thin profile tires of the bigger wheel. I'm actually talking about just a thicker profile tyre. It's going to give you a wider footprint. It's going to be a little bit higher as well. It's going to lift that vehicle up a bit more. But if you're not off-roading, then whatever. It's a right bang and more crawler, guys. It's fine. Don't hate on people. A lot of people just buy the Jeep for the name to be part of the community. They don't necessarily have to take their 
Jeep off-road. Now, we, as like us Jeep Jeepers here, we don't do a lot of hardcore forward driving. I'm sure a lot of people will be like, oh, why don't you have lift kit? Why don't you have bigger tires? You don't do a lot of hardcore forward driving. Just not sort of the stuff that we're into. We're into working on the Jeep, modifying it, making it ours personals, even if you guys don't like it, that's fine. You guys don't need to like it, that's fine. It's right, it's 2020. I don't know hurt anyone's feelings. Come on guys, are you guys okay? It's fine. Um, but we like to doing family adventures, going up the beach, um, and a few small trails to just get us in some nice scenic places. So, comment below what you guys think your worst mods that you've done or the worst mods that anybody can do to a Jeep. Um, comment those below um, if you haven't already, and if you haven't already, smash that like button and the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I haven't hurt anyone's feelings with this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.